So we talked about the M2 MacBooks yesterday, so let's now focus on the software announcements from DubDub and my favorite features from iOS, iPadOS, watchOS, and macOS. And so let's delve into it guys, but first make sure to like and subscribe for the latest Apple news and rumors. And with that being said, let's just talk in. Right, so beginning with watchOS, this was a pretty minor update. Really, the only things I care about are the medication tracking, but that's shared with iOS. And also the new sleep tracking features where, of course, you can now measure the time spent in REM, core or deep sleep. But otherwise, I could care less about the new fitness features with the Apple Watch. I rarely use that aspect of the watch. And so yeah, there's that. Now coming to iOS, obviously the big change was the lock screen. Now this is very similar to Good Lock and Material U with Android, but it basically gives you a new level of customization on the iPhone, which is pretty nice. And yes, I'm itching to test this, but of course I'm pretty cautious about putting a beta on my main device. And so I think I'm gonna wait it out. But the demos on stage look great. I like the widgets. I like the new fonts. I like how the subject of a photo can now be in the foreground. And I also do like the live aspect and the animation you see with some wallpapers. And actually there's a globe one that's very similar to the super wallpapers we see on Xiaomi devices. But hey, that's fine, copy that, because it's a feature that's pretty great. And by the way, this whole redesign clearly is setting up for always on displays to come to future iPhones. And so yes, I'm looking forward to that. Anyways, the next thing that impressed me is lifting a subject from the background of an image. So for example, with the demo they showed us, this dog in the foreground, you can now choose to select the dog only and paste that anywhere you like. That's pretty neat. And if it works as well as it does in the demo, that's gonna be a feature I use on a regular basis. And actually often for YouTube thumbnails, I have to remove the background off images. And so if the iPhone can do that for me like this, instantly within seconds, that would be a game changer. Also, there is live text and live captions for videos, which is pretty neat, and also better speech to text. And yeah, if this is now on par with the Pixel 6, that's again gonna be a very useful upgrade. Anyways, finally, we do have Landscape Face ID. This again is gonna be so convenient, but apparently it's only available on the iPhone 13 models. I'm not sure if that's true, but if it is, that is a bummer to be honest. And finally, the biggest game-changing feature has to be haptic feedback as you use the keyboard. So yeah, this has been a feature on Android for many years, and I've always wanted this on the iPhone because haptic feedback on the iPhone in general is great. And so yeah, now having the tingling feeling as you type on the keyboards, that's gonna be pretty great. Now coming to macOS Ace Ventura, there were two main upgrades that caught my eye. The first one, of course, is Stage Manager where you can now arrange windows in a dock-like system on the left. Now I may try this, but to be honest, I don't have many windows open on my Mac at once to utilize this feature. So yeah, I do think I'm going to stick to mission control for the most part. However, the next feature blew my mind because now you can use your iPhone as a webcam for your Mac. This could be a game changer because I do occasionally live stream and so of course, having the ability to use my iPhone instead as my main camera wirelessly with my Mac sounds absolutely amazing. But of course, that's not the only trick Apple has up its sleeves because this feature also enables center stage through the ultra wide on the back of the iPhone, portrait mode with the webcam, and also something called desk view where this basically turns your iPhone into an overhead camera so you can record what's below you whilst also recording your face. That sounds amazing and if it works as well as Apple showed us in the demo, I could use that for unboxings on this channel. So yeah, those are all the exciting upgrades with macOS Ventura, but now let's talk about iPadOS. And really the main upgrade has to be the weather app. After years and years of begging for this, we finally got it in all its glory, it looks great. But Apple, where's the calculator app? 
we also need that, so yeah, let's hope we get that with iPad OS 17. But anyways, coming to the other features, really there's not much, since a big feature with iPad OS is the same feature from Mac OS, which is Stage Manager. So yes, like I explained before, if you have many windows open on your iPad, you can now arrange them, but also more excitingly gives you the ability to resize apps and also overlap windows on the iPad. So yeah, this is basically floating windows. I've been wanting this on the iPad for years, and so I'm glad we finally have it. And it gets better, because external display support has also massively improved, and we get a DeX-like mode on the iPad, where now it displays a macOS-like OS that's been optimized for the larger display. However, do note guys, these features are all exclusive to the M1 models. And so yeah, clearly Apple's trying to upsell you to those higher-end iPads, but I do think there's a hardware limitation, because only the M1 models have swap memory and also Mac chip. Anyways, we have device scaling on the iPad now, which is great, and also desktop class apps, which initially I thought was referring to Final Cut, Xcode, and all the pro apps coming to the iPad, but unfortunately that's not the case. Essentially, some Mac features have been brought down to several apps on the iPad. And yeah, that's basically it guys, and to be honest, while I am disappointed the iPadOS 14 home screen is not available with iPadOS 16, I do think the multitasking upgrades do make this a pretty nice update on the whole. And yeah, I'll be honest guys, I was very satisfied with this year's event. There were a bunch of exciting announcements, both hardware and software wise, and so yeah, kudos to Apple and of course, the mighty Craig for headlining this event. But guys, tell me your favourite features from iOS, iPadOS, watchOS, and macOS. Anyways, thank you for watching guys, make sure to like, and subscribe for the latest Apple news, and rumours. Check out the above, on details regarding the iPhone 14 series, and on that note, I'll see you guys in the next one. See ya peeps.